going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Fireside Chat Podcast. I'm joined by a special guest, my boy Hugo. What's up, man? Doing all right? Yep, thanks for having me, man. We're talking about a whole bunch of different topics. Uh, definitely, Hugo's going to bring some insight on a whole bunch of different topics. Uh, I definitely want to give credit to him on a lot of these topics that we are going to be talking about because uh, they're pretty important things, you know, stuff that you've been going through life or different things that you probably were taught, weren't taught, went through, didn't go through, and also stuff to have in mind whenever you're pursuing with other goals or whatever. Yeah, a lot, I mean, a lot of these topics really has to do with, you know, kind of like the growing pains of, you know, starting up, learning your finances, because, you know, as a young, you know, child, you might not be taught anything from your kids, I mean, from, from, your, uh, from your family, because, you know, adults sometimes are sensitive to that topic, you know, you never know what they're really going through. Um, you just know that they're you know, they're supporting you, they take care of you. Um, but you not might not know you know through the actual struggle what they're dealing with, and um, so they might not be as open to you know speaking about that subject to the kids. Um, but it's very important for them to know that just so that way they can you know kind of grasp an idea of what it's like to be a, a responsible adult, uh, knowing how to manage your budget, your finances, preparing yourself for. You know, your future, purchasing a home, purchasing a vehicle, um, you know, making important, you know, financial decisions, uh, or even, you know, investing your money, you know, to have it work for you, which, you know, a lot of grown adults don't actually know how to actually do that. I think working, you know, they're 95, as corny as it may sound, uh, is, is all there is to life and using your social security to retire on, you know, at least for me is not good enough. I prefer to retire at least a little bit early um, you know, watch my kids grow, not have to spend all of my life, you know, slaving away, at least it feels like sometimes. Um, so I like to be able to enjoy my life at least hopefully a little bit sooner than, you know, what most people do. For, 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 man. Just curious, what was it like growing up in your household? Like when it, when it came to like talking about finances and stuff like that? Like, man, uh, I mean that, like I said, never really got spoken about. Uh, I kind of knew, kind of grasped an idea of what my parents made, uh, I, I pretty underestimated it, uh, but I kind of taught them at least, I would budget for them, because I thought I knew it all, right? I'm like, oh, your bills are only this much, this much, but I didn't know what, you know, what all goes along, what medical bills they have to pay, what stuff on the side they have to pay, and whatnot, and um, so, you know, we all, we all think we know it all when you're young, but I actually kind of, you know, try to tell my parents what direction to go towards. Um, I mean, and they, 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 they took care of us, and um, we, we had a good, fam- good good childhood, never really struggled uh, too much, so I mean, it was pretty good, but never really got spoken about finances, about purchasing a house. I didn't know anything about credit or anything until I was, I think, 19. So I wish I would have had a credit card at 18, might have helped me out a little bit, at least in my younger years. Yeah. Um, but I definitely know a lot more now than I used to. That's great, that's great, man. Shit. Honestly, it was basically kind of the same for me. Like, a lot of my parents stated, not a lot of my parents, my parents didn't tell me a lot about that type of stuff either, man. Whether it be about the house, how much mm-hmm. they actually paid for a mortgage, what type of mortgages there are out there, interest, how fast they paid it off. It's called, like, you talk about credit cards, retirement accounts, all that type mm-hmm. of stuff. Like, it was really never spoken about. And I always, for some reason, I always had an interest in it just because I'd always hear about these big people like having tons of money and like what do they do like for a living. Yeah. And a lot of them, it was it was investing. So in my back of my head, I kind of like knew I wanted to do something with that, but there's there's never really anyone around me that I knew that like I could go to and be like, hey, so like, what about this? Like, well, hey, what, like, about what was that moment where you kind of started your you know your learning about you know finances? Um, or when it came to my parents, what they did teach me was saving. Like saving was always a big thing. Like, yeah. like not, not to spend your money on name brand stuff. So like when we go shopping for clothes, a lot of times we did go to the end up going to the mall. But the thing was that they make us pay for like the difference between like like I guess a generic brand <laughs> clothing versus like good clothing and stuff like that. So it was always like you know you gotta save as much as you can because at the end of the day like that's how you acquire what you have. And if you start saving whenever you're young, then late by the time you're old, you'll be able to have something to live off of. But there was never like putting it to work. Um, but I guess you say like when it, when it comes to actually getting into an investing or actually putting my money to work, I started off with a retirement account because I knew they had a retirement account. They had a Roth IRA with uh, someone that they knew, Alec, that was, that was uh, what is it called? 
shit. What's called representative? Basically, uh, I had to ask them. I was like, hey, like, like I, I want to be able to do this because like everybody keeps telling me to save my money and keep start. You starting young, you know, and starting young and investing is good because basically in the long term you're gonna be good. So I like, hey, so like, what's our number? So I could talk to them, mm-hmm. and from there, like it was kind of like not understanding what I was putting my money into, but I knew I was getting something out of it. If that makes sense, mm-hmm. you know. And that continued for a while, but after that, I was like, at the end of the day, like. I'm not saying it's bad to trust other people with your money, but they don't have your best interests when right. it comes to your money. Like they, for them, they just want to provide a little bit of results, but the fact that they got you on, mm-hmm. they're making money off of that. that right. Sense. So it's kind of like, mm, I'd rather be able to know what I'm putting my money into and stuff like that. So from there, it just kind of progressed into me like wanting to keep doing it. Mm-hmm. And I keep hearing these things back like when the COVID crash happened and stuff like that, like uh, everybody was talking about Bitcoin or everybody was talking about stocks yeah. and how everything's fucking going crazy. And, and now uh, everything kind of sounds like a, like a scam. Yeah, everything's like trying to make money off of you. So uh, eventually my cousin had talked to me, I forgot how it came up, but we basically talked about uh, investing type stuff and he mentioned to me that he was in Discord and that uh, he was investing in crypto and like what to look out for and I was like, this is my opportunity, you know, like I always use the excuse like I know someone now, someone's next to me that I don't feel like it's going to scam me because I actually almost get for, uh, scammed by a Forex dude. Really? Before, <laughs> yeah. Um, Same here. Bro. <laughs> well, not Forex, man, dude. Have you ever heard of Primerica? Dude, yeah. I, dude, yeah. <laughs> I, I've worked in a few sales jobs, and I've had people come up to me, like, hey, man, you work in sales. You must be pretty good with talking to people. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, I can, I kind of am. And then they'll invite you, hey, man, we should go grab some lunch. I'll have an opportunity. I just started a business. Man, it ain't no business. It's a business within a business. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's like one of the scams. I almost, well, I wouldn't say it's a scam. You can, you know, that is an income. Selling life insurance, yeah, it's, you can make income off of it. Definitely not for me, though. But yeah. um, you, you said you almost got scammed by Forex guy. Dude, Forex, but also Prime America, speaking on that, like that's actually who uh, mentioned earlier the retirement account my parents actually had uh, with. They actually had with someone from Prime America, but they knew that really? dude from like way back in the day, like probably like 20, 25 years ago. Yeah. He got it for them, I don't know how long ago, but they found that he worked with that type of stuff and they asked him. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically, another another one of the branches, like I guess you'd say, tried to get me in their their stuff. He called me randomly, and he's like, "Hey, uh, Jose, or someone like some random like Mexican name." Like he's like, "Hey, they called me. Let me know that you're like you're looking for a job, dude. I don't know. I don't know no fucking Jose." <laughs> uh, but I was like, I looking for a, t- a job at the time, and I was like, you know what? Like these, it sounds like it might be something I might be interested in. I heard bad things about Primer, but I was like, you know what? Like I'll I'll see it for myself, not for now. Decide. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think the product they sell isn't bad, but yeah. you know, their whole business the, is bad. Their mm-hmm. business model. I mean, sales, it works. Like it's probably one of the biggest companies, but it's just not not for me at all. Yeah. What I had the biggest problem with is that the way they they made their money. So like basically, recruitment is something big that they make money off. So if you bring someone in, you get a bonus or whatever. And the more people you get in, the more bonuses you make. And if they make sales, then you get a part of them, a part of their what they make. If that yeah. Makes sense. If, if you have to pay to start working there, that, yeah, that's where it gets <laughs> scammy. For real. And then not only that, but uh, what they did was that basically the first ten sales that you did, you go as like under them if that makes sense. So they they do right. the sales for you. But not only that, but they're supposed to be family members or friends, the people that you know. So it's kind of like right. you can't even make money off of it. Yeah, you bring them in, but it's like it's, you can't even make money off of it. But on top of that, like your family and your friends are more susceptible to telling you yes than someone right. who don't know type deal. That's why like uh, that's why they were so so successful in my opinion. But the thing is, is that like I, I like you said, it's a good product. But at the end of the day, uh, like the whole business model, I just don't mess with that because like. It's just not something that I like. If I'm gonna bring someone in on something, mm-hmm. I want to know what it is first, and I want to be able to be successful at it before I actually do that. Yeah, and when it comes to money. And if it's sales, I prefer you know something I believe in, a product I believe in, versus you know something that oh like I don't know anything about. They're gonna start teaching me about it. I don't know about it already, and they're gonna try to get me to work for them. You know, you know what I mean? Something yeah. a company that already um, comes to mind is is what I would be more you know something i would actually work for himself yeah yeah and kind of playing off of that uh whenever you're more susceptible to say yes or to be able to listen to someone that you know whether it be family or friends since my, i knew my cousin and i, I trusted him what's called with the, the whole discord thing i ended up getting in 
it wasn't that expensive at, compared to other things that I've been willing to like that I've been offered, whether it be Prime America or whether it be the Forex dude or asking for like three hundred dollars a month for like courses or whatever. <laughs> this was like a right. hundred dollars for a year. So I was like, I've saved up all this money, all this time, you know, working on what I'm doing. You know, a hundred dollars I'm willing to sacrifice in order to learn something. If it doesn't work out and I got scammed, well then, <laughs> fuck you, bro. <laughs> but it's like, uh, it's like, you know, it's it's not a huge loss compared to like paying three hundred dollars or mm-hmm. something like that. So to me, it's kind of like, you know, I'm willing to do it. And from there, you know, they had access to whether it be uh, lectures, whether it be like signals or different stuff, um, books to read and stuff like that. So like for me, it, it, that's what I got into. That's how I got it. From there, I just like took off with it. Like at that at that time, I was unemployed because I had quit my job because I was like, I'm gonna save a certain amount of money. I'm gonna dip, I'm gonna go on vacations, I'm gonna do all this type of shit that I've been wanting to do. Kind of living like freely, like an early retirement type deal. Right. Just for a little bit before I found another job. Because I had just graduated too. Um, but uh, at that, that time, you know, I just spent trying to learn how to ensure it really get good at this. Because at the end of the day, like, like I finally got a, a chance to do what I actually wanted to do and get into. What about yourself though? Like, what did, who did you come across that might have been able to help you get into this type of deal? Man, everything is really just curiosity i was you know a lot of people learn from you know youtube uh, the internet you know i i can't quite remember what was the first thing i really that really interested me and uh, i i want to say Shouldn't have blind prayer. You good, you good. Well, by chance, was there any, like, uh, I guess you say, like, whether it be books or whether it be a website or a YouTube page that really, like, stuck out to you in the beginning? Man, Graham Stephan was probably one of the most uh, people, influential people that, you know, got me interested in, you know, stock market. He mostly spoke about real estate. Actually, now I actually remember. So, <laughs> I originally wanted to become a real estate agent. So, that's what I was kind of thinking about doing. You know, coming out of college, uh, during the pandemic, I could not learn online to save my life. So, my whole thing was, man, I'm, I'm going to be working, alright, maybe college isn't for me. I'm going to try to look for that skill that, you know, I can kind of do, that's really high income. And that's one of the biggest things, like I said, was to invest in yourself. If you have to purchase a course, or if you have to learn, or if you're already in that field, like say, you know, you're in real estate field. Um, you know, purchase a course on, you know, learning how to you know, overcome, you know, objections to, because there's objections whenever you're a real estate agent too. If you're trying to sell somebody's house, you know, they don't want you to be, you know, their agent. Maybe they already have an agent or they're just, you know, not looking to sell with an agent. You can offer their services, you know, based off of the things that you learn from that, you know, course that you purchase, uh, you can apply that knowledge into your field and in turn make you more money. So um, it's kind of what I, I say was definitely you know, important to invest in yourself. And so my investment was kind of learning from, you know, Graham Stephan and from there, you know, kind of leads to investing videos. Uh, I think uh, Jeremy, I can't remember that guy's name, Jeremy Steven, I think, from uh, Financial Education, he's on YouTube. Have you, have you seen his videos? Honestly, I haven't. No. Probably looking to. But, man, yeah, he, he's one that I kind of, one of the biggest first, really biggest, one of the first YouTube uh, YouTubers that talked about stocks. So that's really kind of kind of where I learned my thing. I was I was the only person, I was the only child living in my house, so I don't really have anybody to, like, kind of teach me um, much about, you know, living out in the real world. So I kind of learned everything from YouTube. And so... That's kind of my thing. That's where I learn my stuff. And that's why, I mean, how do you really bring up, you know, uh, you know, finances into, you know, for other people? How do you put it out there without sounding like, oh, you're trying to sell a product, oh, you're trying to, you know, like, make other people follow you to, you know, sell you a course? How do you go about that and, like, not sounding rude or anything? Like, how to, how to make people understand, like, how to, you know, not be frugal, but save their money, be smart with their money, and make it, you know, work for them? How do you, how do you introduce the topic? Uh, it's, it's really hard, man, because like a lot of people might shut you out instantly just because they come across like you're talking about scammers and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like, oh, here comes another dude. Like someone that they knew from high school or someone that they knew from like this, or someone that they're close to even come up to mm-hmm. talking about that shit. So it's kind of like, 
damn, like another person's coming up to me. So it's kind of like, how do you break that barrier like you're talking about? Yeah. So for me, like, what I, that's the whole point of like the, the YouTube page and the investing page. It's like, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to sell you anything. The only thing you have to invest is your time. So not necessarily with respect to how they view it, but when it comes to learning, mm -hmm. like they don't have to pay for shit. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of how that I came across. But that's to like coming, uh, coming around and talking to people about it and figuring out how to like bring it up without being like an asshole about it or mm -hmm. flashing it or being a, I don't know. I don't know what for it is. <laughs> well, I feel like, you know, innately a lot of people want to help others out. Yeah. And, you know, that's what, at least I would hope. I would hope other people want to, you know, help see pe other people succeed. So if there's somebody that's in your field, and one topic I want to mention, you know, if you being, you know, whatever field you want to get into, um, you know, have, have a mentor, have somebody that, you know, ask people that have already been in the position that you're trying to be in. Uh, how how they got into that position if they can help you because you know for every hundred yeses or every hundred no's there's bound to be at least be one yes for somebody at least wants to help mm -hmm. and um so i mean anybody that you see that as part of your network is um you know just speaking to people you know if they if they know how to do something that you're interested in speak about it speak to them about it um because i have a customer who you know i sell cars they, uh, they purchase a vehicle from me, they flip houses. And that's something that I want to get into. Um, you know, because me personally, I would like to be able to, you know, live off of, you know, uh, different properties. One of my goals uh, is, you know, retiring my mom. Only way I think I could think of would be to, you know, have a house for her, you know, that's actively making her money. She doesn't have to work anymore. And she's, you know, she's set for life. So that's one of my, you know, biggest goals is to, you know, retire my mom's kind of, kind of why the reason, you know, I got into the whole deal for this, uh, you know, in the first place was her in this whole space of, you know, financing, retiring early, growing, growing my money is, you know, take care of my family, make sure they're good. They don't really have to, you know, struggle too much. That's badass, man. By any chance, is there like anything that like I guess say like you review it frequently if that makes sense? So like if maybe something you might write down or maybe thoughts that you run through your head or think about like you're talking about and you're talking about like you want to be able to retire early, you yourself you would enjoy time with your kids or your family whenever you grow up without having to worry about stress all the time about money. Like is there like, anything like you write down and think about sometimes or take some time out of your day, maybe every once in a week or something like that to think about that type of shit? Man, I man the only thing I could think of is you know, not letting my future self down um, just because I, I feel like a lot of us we feel like we're behind mm -hmm. uh, you know I feel sometimes I feel behind I you know I'm not um, I stopped going to college I was three years in deep uh, I didn't really you know finish so in my mind I'm okay I'm a little behind I'm only working my you know my sales job uh, which still you can make good income off of pretty much anything you want so I'm not saying don't go to school, but you know, my biggest thing is, okay, I can, you know, I kind of reinforce, okay, I can make a life out of, you know, a high income job, high income skill. Um, and that's kind of what I think would be, you know, one of the most important things is to invest in yourself. You know, find, you know, if you're not gonna be, you know, working that typical, you know, or if you're trying to be a doctor, an engineer, one of those high earning uh, where usually they can retire early um, as to you know if we're working you know, a regular job when it might not be able to have afford those you know luxuries of you know retiring early um, but me i prefer not to put myself in debt uh, i'm actively trying to grow my portfolio so i think just just reminding myself that it's okay to you know if, if I do feel behind, I'm not actually behind. We're all we're all at our own pace. We're all at our own time. So, I mean, how do you feel about that? Do you, um, what well, what are you trying to? What are your steps to, you know, become financially uh, free in the future? Um, I had to change a lot of shit uh, before we do get to that. I also want to touch on something that you mentioned. Uh, something with like mentality. I guess you'd say is like uh, passing off on like parents to kids. Like we were talking about earlier, finances wasn't 
haven't necessarily spoken about, but education is something that's really big, you know. Parents really do push like college, college, college this, college that. Again, I'm not saying not to go to school, but if you don't know what you want to do, there's no kind of no point putting yourself in debt or even kind of wasting your time. Yeah. Not necessarily to say that there's nothing you can learn outside of like the actual courses themselves. Because honestly, I went to college. I'm not using my degree I graduated with, and I'm not planning on doing either. No. So, so some people might see it as a waste of time, but I did learn some important things outside of that that honestly kind of helped me now. But at the same time too, it's kind of like, I could use that time, whether it be for like a certificate or a trade school or something else that was more faster in which I could have been already in the field in which I wanted to be in. Right. Yeah. But as for setting steps in the future uh, or goals I might want to be able to accomplish, uh, right now it's just budgeting is my, my main thing. You know, I want to be able to dedicate a lot of portion of whatever I'm making to my investments, you know, whether it be in crypto, whether it be in stocks. Those are the main two things I'm in, by the way. And, and how do you set your budget? Like, well, what are the kind of like important things that, you know, as far as like your spending, what is kind of like the things that you budget for? Like, do you have a, you have a car note, you have, uh, you know, certain bills that you're, you know, making sure you get taken care of first, and then, you know, you, you use your expenses for like, you know, whatever you want to go out, stuff like that. How, how much of your, do you know like what percentage you invest of like, your income? Um, honestly, I'm lucky. Lucky to be kind of free ball. I'm 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 lucky in a position uh, because I, one, I don't have a car note. I bought my car cash, so I don't really have to pay that. It's an older car, so my insurance is also low as well. I don't have a girlfriend because that's a whole category that you should have dedicated in your budget yeah. <laughs> for that. I do have a OnlyFans that I'm subscribed to, so you know that that does take a big portion of my budget. No, I'm just kidding. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's a really premium. <laughs> hey, uh, only uh, like three hundred dollars out of my check. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Somebody's scamming this guy. <laughs> she says it's her, bro. I believe it. <laughs> oh, man. oh man, so you're paying it all again? Bro. <laughs> I'm kidding. Jeez. No, actually, uh, because of all that stuff, and also I live with my parents still uh, at this point in time, like I help them out with bills and stuff like that. Uh, but apart from that, you know, there's a lot of things I don't have to pay, so I'm able to dedicate like a pretty good portion. I'd probably say about 50% of my my check to, to investments. Really? Yeah, so it's, I'm, I'm lucky to be in the position I am. Me, man, I kind of free ball it, dude. I don't, I'm like, damn, am I going to invest this month? <laughs> Which I wish I really need to um, kind of like, have something because like robin hood you can set aside like say 100 bucks a month into your account 500 bucks a month in your account yeah. and then later on you can invest it if you want i need to start doing that i don't really do that i just kind of I'm like okay this month was good for me all right because I'm, I'm on commission so it, it really fluctuates i can't really say okay this month or i'm gonna continue to invest this much because you know i never know if i'm gonna you know be able to put that much in my account and, and still be okay the next uh, the next few weeks. Um, but you know, once I have when I have good months, put money in there uh, and kind of kind of use my Robinhood account as kind of like a savings account. I don't know yeah. if you um, if you kind of do the same or you kind of like use your money in your Robinhood to uh, sell trade stocks. What's your what's your strategy? Right now I had to switch it because I honestly had like some pretty bad experiences when it comes to trading. Oh man, dude. <laughs> I know oh, you got a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, Weed stocks. <laughs> Weed stocks. <laughs> go ahead go and say talk a little bit about that. Dude, man. man 20, oh, 2018, dude. I lost like half of my portfolio on Weed stocks, dude. Jeez. I Tilray. Dude, Tilray screwed me back. Lost like 5K on it. It was a hype. Bought in. Three days later, I'm pretty sure it felt like 50%, dude. So a lot of a lot of opportunities come up. A lot of opportunities, you know, kind of get screwed. Yeah. Uh, call options. I've made a little bit on call options. Those are really risky. Higher, like I said, high risk, high reward. But you know, you can, you can fall huge on those. So yeah. I kind of slow down. I kind of just put my money into slow growing stocks. I'm less risky now, just because because that that traumatization. Yes, it's pretty insane. <laughs> Those <man>. L's. <laughs> Those L's. Yeah, yeah. Um, I honestly started off trading shares because I knew how risky investments could be. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like on some. I won't say call them penny stocks. They weren't necessarily penny stocks, but they were like cheaper stocks that I could afford to be Small able to buy. Yeah, I could be able to buy a couple of them. 
and be able to take you know some take some off the table because like if you buy let's say like QQQ or spy shares the things are like four hundred dollars so you can't really like sell like half or something like that unless you got practical uh, practice shares but uh you know I started playing those those are have higher moves in uh, than the you know, regular market so I was able to make you know some pretty nice gains like I think the first two months I made like ten percent fifteen percent each month but we were in the bull run yeah we were in the bull run though so I mean like who's not gonna make money unless you're us <laughs> I'm just kidding yeah man dude that was um COVID, that was, a, that was a huge monster. That was helping me out. Yeah. Made everybody think that they were the best investor in the world. Yeah. Which, I mean, we're all up like maybe like 56% at that point. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this recession brought us down. We came to reality. I mean, we're, we're, we're decent, we're decent. We're not hurting too bad, are we? Nah, a little bit, man. Oh, still, we're hurting? Still, still, oh, still trying to make up some of those losses. Because the thing was is that like, I, I thought I learned how to trade and how to read certain stocks. So from there, from a technical analysis standpoint, so from there I started like playing options because I was like, okay, you know, let me take out the training wheels. Yeah. I got this. So I started playing them and I started actually start making some like decent money. But then I, uh, from there I started losing a little bit. You know, it's okay. You take your losses or whatever. And then uh, it was actually, I was actually down probably about like 20, 20%, 30%. But the thing is that like, I had this hot streak a hot hot streak and I made so much money like money that like you probably take you two weeks to make maybe a month to make and I made that like in over the course of a week and it's like dude like I got this like yeah. it just fills you up with this uh euphoria I know they call it euphoria yeah, you feel like a casino man yeah like you're, you're gonna take a huge dub you take a huge dub and you spend it all yeah man and from that point I was like okay let me take the let me let me start like cooling off a little bit so what I'm doing is I still start trading but I start swinging Mm -hmm. uh, with longer time contracts and stuff like that. But the thing was is that, like you're talking about, like once we hit the peak and we started hitting the other way, I thought we were like, it sounds ignorant to say it now, but you think that you think it only goes up basically. Because mm -hmm. there was so many times that people thought that the market was gonna fall after COVID because we had like basically a V-shaped recovery and we'd be going like straight up. So like every single time we fall, everybody's like, oh, is this it? Is this it? And they proved wrong. And then it keeps coming right. back. Is this it? Is this it? No, it's not. And it keeps going up. So like when it fell, and I was like, okay, well then we're still good because everybody keeps saying it. you basically respect the trend until it's broken. But once it was broken, I didn't realize that. So I just started playing long-term swings, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna sit on it because I started this new job where I start working uh, overnight, so I'm not barely be able to be active during the day to check it to see what's going on. And I didn't, there ended up being lawsuits like against Facebook, against Ooh. Mara, insider trade, not insider trading, but they had like uh, insider sell shares, mm -hmm. and then they ended up setting the stock down. Um, Whole bunch of other shit like FOMC when they talked about the interest uh, interest rates rising, they they said that it was supposed to happen originally during the summertime of this year, but it ended up being March, and that drove the markets like down in November December time. So you go what's called what type of uh, I guess it, characteristics of like a mentality you feel like are important to have not necessarily for investing in which I, but just in general in life just trying to pursue what you got going on or even with it. just like again just in general. Man, I would say you know just. Thinking about the positive outcome, not worrying about you know, the negative outcome, although you should be you know, considering it. Uh, I will always say, you know, if you believe you can, yes, you will, then you're right. If you believe you can't, then you're also right. So I mean, you really just have to believe in yourself, like anything that you want to pursue, you have to go at it 100%. So I mean, say YouTube, like you, Isaac, go at it 100%, bro. I believe, you know, you'll go ahead and climb the ranks, bro. You just, you just got to give your all. Uh, you really just have to think about, like I said, the positive outcome. And really, right now, we have nothing to lose. And, you know, we don't have, like, our like celebrity right now, you know, they, they'll lose anything if they do something bad. Right now, we don't have anything to lose, man. So let's, let's take, some, take some risks. Um, you know, is there any risks that you've taken that you say... Uh, man, this might be you know a bad decision, but you know, I'm gonna go for it. I'd probably say uh, yellowing my port. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd probably say what's called uh, switching my major and finishing college. Yeah. I didn't graduate with necessarily with what I initially started. I initially started as an engineer, mm -hmm. and I really only did it because one, my parents had pushed me to do it, uh, and two, like I was already good at math and science, so it's kind of like it just the, the the math and science part of it came easy. But at that point, I was just kind of doing a degree just because people were telling me to. To finish? Yeah. 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 And just because, like, that's what's expected of me in society, basically, really. And really, at that point in time, like, I just wasn't happy where I was at. So I was like, well, I can either graduate with a degree, go to a job I'm probably not going to like, or I could just cut it off here and really try to figure out what it is that I want. And eventually, I switched my major. I graduated uh, 
I still would have graduated early, but not to hype myself up. But <laughs> I had some credits yeah. from high school. But I would have finished early. I, I did finish early. I finished it like in two and a half or three years. And from there, with the bachelor's, and from there, I just try to figure out this investing stuff and really just what it is I really do want in life, man. I just you just kind of got to break out of that rat hole like uh, you had spoken before. But, yeah, man. Um, and when I was going to say, dude, yeah, me, like I said, not graduating just yet made me feel very behind. I don't know if I'm even going to go back to college, but seeing people walk the stage, everybody that was my classmates, kind of made me feel like I was, you know, falling behind or not accomplishing as much as they are. But you kind of just realize, you know, people will have their you know, different goals, different, you know, things they want to accomplish. Um, you know, so to anybody that, you know, did that, accomplished that, I congratulate them. Uh, me, myself, uh, I feel like once you're in college or you're just working, you kind of feel like you're in a rat race, not really knowing you know, what you're trying to you know get there. Uh, it's kind of hard to snap out of it. You know, you know what is that thing that kind of made you realize, man, I need to change the direction you know of my life. What, what, what kind of you know changed you or made you made you think, all right, maybe I need to make a few changes. Um, it was. It was a combination of things. One was the coursework; it started getting more harder. And it was like, there's no point of my, putting myself through this much stress if I if this isn't even what I want. Um, that, and then also, it was just this. I don't know. It was just this feeling. Like, I don't know. It's one day you just finally get tired of everything. And at that point, I was dealing with a lot of stress uh, because I was working so much, I was schooling so much, I had failed kind of relationships, or failed attempts at relationships. Uh, stress between uh, missing out of, of things with my family um, and it's just you know my most important thing for me was friends and family and I wasn't doing that so for me it was just like at that point in time I was just like you know what screw all this scrap this it's time to go back to the drawing boards type deal man and that's that's what I did I can't say it's like a pinpoint in time it was just yeah. like a feeling that eventually built up and then a thought that of leaving built up and then eventually like I just finally did it finally like getting the strength you know, or confidence to be able to do it I understood that I'm probably gonna be letting these people down, but at the end of the day, like I gotta worry about myself, not necessarily what other people yeah. have, have expectations of me. And eventually, you know, we all hope to get there. You know, kind of what you you plan on, uh, you know, what kind of situation you plan on, you know, looking at yourself five, ten years down the road. Uh, probably like three, three years, two years. I plan on uh, leaving where I'm at, or at least going part time. Um, hopefully after being able to put so much into this stuff and from there just kind of like have that time to be able to do the different things I wanted to do and whether it be focusing more on learning learning some stuff whether it be YouTube, whether it be Instagram, whether it be making videos and then I'll enjoy or whether it be spending time with family and stuff like that and be able to get a taste of what it's like to be able to do the mm -hmm. different stuff and um, hopefully after I write out some of the longer term stuff probably about end, early 2030s it's probably be the time whenever I'll be able to actually retire, retire to where like I have the money basically where I want to. I spoke at the last podcast. In your 30s? Yeah, in the 30s. In the last po podcast episode, I mentioned basically like hitting that million dollar mark. And it's really a long shot, but you know, I feel like as hard of I budget and I am about myself on that and trying to focus on what I'm putting my money into, like it's really an accomplishable goal. Yeah. And thank goodness that I, uh, uh, another thing we might have uh, talked about before was uh, basically not being complacent where you're at, you know, the uh, job that, uh, whether it comes with jobs or whatever, you know, my mentality is like, I never want to step back down uh, without gaining something long-term. Mm -hmm. So like with jobs right now, I'm not expecting any long-term out of my current job. It's kind of more of like, I want to make as much as I can now and not be able to leave that in order to move on to what I want, to use it as a stepping stool in order to go up to the ranks. But a lot of people get kind of complacent where they're at. They're, and, then, and then they end up complaining about how they don't want to have money for this or have money for that but at the end of the day. We put ourselves in these own boxes that we have, and it's up to us to be able to make a change about it or just to complain about it. Yeah, and I mean, one thing that um, one of the people that kind of helped me out was one of my old, you know, sales managers. He told me to write down a number, and what is that goal that you're trying to achieve? He said, "I want you to write how much you want to make that year. Write it down and divide it by 365 days." Me, my goal was, all right, I want to make 100K. You divide that by 365 days. This is a number I remember. I'm going to remember it forever. 8333.33 three, 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 repeat. 
that's how much you or I'm sorry not true <laughs> three 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 repeat is how much you have to make every single day in order to hit that 100k mark so you have to hit three hundred thirty three dollars and thirty three cents every single day to 100k now what am I you know my goal was all right man what, am, what is my plan to achieve this you know how many vehicles do I have to sell to achieve three hundred thirty three dollars thirty three cents every single day is there a form of side income that I need to make in order to hit that if so how much and I think that's kind of what we have to do is break it down day by day break it year by year uh, month by month see what you know your goals are every single month because uh, the end of the day you know your your outcome way in the future have to break it down uh, so that way you know you look at it day by day you see okay i didn't do this today i need to do the next day so that way i can compensate for what my month goal is if i didn't hit my uh my goal this week all right what do i need to do next week so that way same thing hit my goal for the next month next month okay mm, this is i'm not where i need to be but i still have 11 more months to go this big goal for the whole entire year you should at least you know sum up into small goals that's pretty much it what it is break down your goals you know small by small increments that's right. That's right. what is your why why do you want to accomplish what you want to accomplish okay. uh, it's for one main reason well it's multiple reasons but one of the main reasons that I look at is that basically like a lot of things I don't fit in if that makes sense so mm -hmm. I don't see myself working a labor laborer's job and uh, not because I don't want to put in the work for it but it's just because that's what my parents had to go through and I used to actually work with my dad um, in remodeling services there's a lot of buildings we'd go in that are dirty with roaches or no AC, like it's just humid as hell inside there. Up in the attic when you're changing, changing the AC unit, it's hot, you're drenched in sweat, and it's kind of like, I've, I've given the opportunity, he gave me the opportunity to be able to make something better of this, you know, so I don't see myself doing that. Currently working in a right. house. You probably said, what are you doing? What am I doing with my life? Yeah, for <laughs> real. It's like, I'm, I don't want to choose to be able to be in the same situation. And he told me basically you got the opportunity like to do it like if you either you, you use school or whatever way you end up making it up it's called like it's up to you to make something up yourself. Yeah. yeah and uh that and the job i'm working now is a warehouse ac but i mean still i'm still sweating i'm still lifting heavy shit. uh office job i don't imagine myself behind a desk at least not something that i can envision right now maybe maybe video editing you know maybe something like that <laughs> but uh not at the moment um, your own desk not somebody yeah my own desk not, somebody not a company desk, desk. <laughs> Um, and just really a whole bunch of different other categories of jobs. I just don't see myself doing that. And this is the only thing I can really see myself doing. So it's like, I have to make this work. Whether it be like learning new shit, whether it be looking up, looking at websites, doing my own research, asking questions, uh, going to different people, trying to learn from them, you know, whatever it really takes in order to do it. It's not so much of like, uh, you know, I have to like throw everything I have right mm -hmm. now, capital wise into something, cause it has to work. And that's kind of the mentality that I had at first. And that's why my portfolio hurts so much. Uh, in the beginning because I, I made it that type of mentality where it has to work because of this and the reason why is and the way the way in order to make it work was to throw everything that I had in it but in reality it's more of like an educational standpoint you know what are you doing in order to get yourself there so it's really that and then along with the family as well and be able to give back to a lot of people because a lot of people help maybe not financially but like whether it be with life advice or whether it be caring for me in certain situations or even be able to show me different ways on how to do different stuff in life you know, go about caring myself if that makes sense they gave yeah. me the confidence to be able to be the top person I am today. So that's really what it comes down to, man. So, you know, when we're trying to get to that goal that we're trying to you know, get at, sometimes it feels like we're like a horse of blinders. We're just, uh, what's it called? We got tunnel vision. Yeah. We're trying to get to that goal. We kind of neglect, you know, things that we're trying to, um, that we have in our life, responsibilities we have in our life, because we're so focused on that. Uh, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it is a bad thing. Uh, mm, I mean, is there any time that you make others kind of feel like you haven't been spending your time correctly with them, or is there any way that you kind of like show them your goal, your you know your ideal outcome, and you know, kind of show them you know why you have to put so much of your time and effort into you know, some specific? Because me myself, 
I mean, I, I got to pretty much dedicate, you know, 60, sometimes 65 hours into my craft, my job, you, you know, kind of get to uh, get into the, what I'm trying to get into. Um, cause right now, not really spending much time on real estate, but the income that I'm earning, that's what I'm trying to, you know, push into my, you know, my deal situation, but I have put in zero hours into it. So, I mean, how many, um, or is there any people that you've talked to that, uh, you know, you have to kind of explain to them why you're not focusing any time on them? Mm, I haven't came across, I think there's only one person I came across that mailed like an ex, like from college time. Cause when I got another like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, I had a, like, she asked me, the thing was that she kind of came from like a family that was kind of like, she, she came from a poor family, but she, her stepdad ended up being pretty rich, so he kind of paid for everything that she had going on. But, uh, you know, I, I guess you say I had the opposite. I wasn't rich, but we had plenty plenty when I was younger. But as we grew older, we started getting a little more tight on money to where I actually had a, to, to work for basically a lot of things that I wanted to maintain my vehicle and everything bills-wise. Mm -hmm. And I had to explain to her one time because she had asked me, you know, like, why, why don't you spend enough time with me, basically? Like, why do you have to work? Cause I remember there was one time she wanted me to call out or something like that mm. uh, after uh, a late night, <laughs> and um, I just had to tell her. Like, yeah, I don't know, cause we work <laughs> three hours a week. <laughs> At least. Uh, honestly, I didn't have an answer back then. I, I couldn't explain to her. I just was blank. But, you know, but after thinking about that, she made me realize like like how how much time I was dedicating to what and to when. And from that, kind of made me a little more woke, if you want to say, to like when it comes to distributing my time. You feel like you should. You know, be laser focused on one thing in your life that you're trying to do, or should you, if you delegate too much time outside of you know things that you're trying to do, would you lose like focus? Would you not accomplish things? What do you, what do you think about that? You should, should you, um, should you laser focus on something, or should you expand? It's a good question, man. Because uh, low key, you can either pull a David Goggins. And, <laughs> and that's, that's it, man. Or you could pull uh, the guys he talks about in his videos so that do shit. Um, it's really hard, man, because I've been like back and forth between different schedules that I try to create for myself. Right now, I guess say my balance is uh, basically Monday to Thursday, I work uh, for whatever time amount of time I work. So let's say I get home like around three, from three to about six, I'll spend working on something, either reading up on something, looking at charts, how things perform during the day or whatever. And from there, I go to bed. I wake up at two, one thirty, in order to get ready for it. Can do it all again. So Monday to Thursday, that's like set. And then Friday is kind of like my recovery day. Something I used to do with my sister a lot that I actually uh, just did recently, and it felt pretty good was to be able to to go out and go get boba. She likes boba, <laughs> so uh, we'll do that. And I spend time with my family. And usually Friday is kind of like a recovery day, you know, because it's so like laborious and I'm tired. And I just want that day in order to recover. So I use that resting, and also with her, and also the rest of my family as well. And then. Saturday from when I wake up up until like night night time ish I'll be working on something if I do go out with friends or whether I do go out with someone and I'll do that but I'll just be mindful of uh, not spend the whole time there if that makes sense so mm -hmm. let's say I'm going to a party that starts at like 7 I'm not gonna be there from 7 until like 4 or 5 in the morning and right. the water burger session afterwards that everybody does right <laughs> you know it's time consuming yeah you know there's all those hours could be put to something that you're working on so really it's just either I'll show up late or I'll leave early so that way I can come back and work so you have certain days that you delegate to uh, certain tasks, certain, uh, I guess, what was the word, what was the word you could say, uh, responsibilities? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So we can't have it all, we just have to go at it, you know, day by day. Yeah, it's kind of hard though, it really is, because every single time, all the time that you don't work, or use working on your craft, like it's like time that you're setting yourself back. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal that you have set for a certain amount of time, it really could be achieved sooner. It's just a matter of you whether you're willing to do it, but also you gotta be mindful, like you mentioned, let's call it the uh, loved ones and other people as well, because you know, the next day is a promise, so. so uh, or going to the gym. <laughs> yeah, we're going to the gym. You neglect that too. <laughs> like me, wink, wink. I'm dead. Uh, yeah, man, it, it, it just sucks because they, they could be gone tomorrow. You know, there's been surprising situations that come up. Like my neighbor actually recently died because he got stunned by a bee, bro. What? Yes, he got stunned by a bee oh and he's God. just like that broke on and it was crazy because it didn't feel real because like i mean i'm so used to seeing him and everything and now it's just he's not there anymore is he allergic i think he's allergic bro something, oh, something like really bad allergic allergy i'm assuming that's great yeah and 
that kind of put it in perspective recently. I guess you'd say that like anything could really happen. So really, it's just been I've been trying to not necessarily not focus as much, but like the time that I am awake during the times that other people are awake, I try to spend with them. Mm-hmm. And then whenever I do have my time, like I'm gonna try to spend as much time as I can not on Instagram. Whenever I should be looking at something like a video or a chart or something. Working. Yeah, or even on my breaks at work, you know, sometimes I'll be watching like videos that are related to what I'm studying, so that way I don't necessarily waste time doing something else. But don't get me wrong, you know, I'll watch Netflix or I watch <laughs> I'll watch anime or something. Yeah. <laughs> what about you though? I mean, is you how do you feel about when it comes to like having laser focus versus kind of like you know making time for other things? Man, uh, I mean, me myself, I I'm kind of bad at focusing, man, because I just go off on tangents for you know different different things that I want to do in life. Uh, I kind of lose focus while even while I'm at work, um, but you know the goal still remains the same, and kind of just sometimes me I just I just really wing it. Uh, try to spend as much time as you can with you know family. Try to make the the best of it. That's what I can say. That's basically going to conclude today's session, guys. Hopefully, I did learn something. Y'all did watch throughout the video. Uh, this video is categorized, as you might be able to see so far. So you kind of skip ahead to whatever section you do and pay more attention to. But hopefully, I did watch the whole thing because you would definitely, but definitely uh, provided some good insights. Sometimes we just talk about our life story, but you know, I, why, why, why not, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely be easy to go on tangents, especially whenever like you're so like I want to say passionate, but like passionate about something. Whether it be someone I haven't seen this guy in like three and two years, so it's been a minute, man. So it's <laughs> definitely good to be able to catch up. But we definitely should hang out sometime, man. All right, man. Appreciate you being able to thank, come out. Thank you for uh, having me on the podcast, man. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. Yeah, I definitely look forward to the next one. Hopefully, we would have it out soon. Out of this kid. Stick, yeah, stick, yeah.